you had mentioned earlier that uh, you had found some pretty good tools uh, to deal with jealousy, both, I guess, internally with yourself and maybe with, with uh, your partners or your partner's partners. Um, would you like to share some of those uh, with us? Sure. Yeah, as, as a therapist, I've applied these um, with actually thousands of people, both um, in groups and, and individually, and they work. Uh, you know, people are really intimidated by dealing with jealousy, and uh, for good reason. Um, you know, people have been murdered as a result of jealousy, but there's no need for it to, to go there. So, one of the, the most important things to know, first of all, is if you're already in a jealous state, <laughs> Uh, trying to be reasonable, rational, logical, talk about it, especially with the person that you're jealous of, is, doesn't work. Not a good idea. So it's much better if you're in the throes of jealousy to go nonverbal. And by nonverbal, uh, that could look a few different ways. Um, breathing. And these tools apply to really any strong emotion, not just jealousy, but um, particularly like the holotropic or circular type breath work, but any kind of slow, um, relaxed breathing, uh, progressive relaxation, if that's something you've run into, or yogic breathing, anything that uh, gets you to breathe more deeply and gets you out of your head and into your body where you can just let these uh, sensations move through and not get too involved in the story about what's causing them. So that's kind of like the, the emergency first aid for dealing with jealousy. But <laughs> um, it's much better not to get there in the first place. Um, or I won't say not to get there because people often ask me, you know, do I still get jealous? And yeah, I still have jealous feelings come up, but I don't get overwhelmed by them. I don't feel controlled by them. Um, I was actually really fortunate to realize when I was still very young that I had a choice when I was uh, starting to feel jealous of whether to let that take me over or whether to go another direction with it. And what I mean by go another direction with it is um, on a, on a nonverbal level, you can really check in and see what is it that I'm needing right now. Because in many ways, emotions are, are messages to us that our needs are not being met. So you could see what is it that you need. You know, maybe you need to be hugged or held. Um, maybe you need to to be reassured. Reassurance doesn't always work, but sometimes it, it does. Maybe you're feeling out of control, and so you, you need to make peace with not so much jealousy, but control issues. Um, so these are, this is what I mean by a, a choice, and I have a, a little ebook called Compersion Meditations toward using jealousy as a path to unconditional love that lay out a lot of the um, uh, a cognitive psychologist, you know, would call it the, uh, the cognitions, the, the, the stream of thoughts that lead you into a jealous state. And so most people can, you know, kind of refer to this and see, okay, yeah, that's, that's the series of thoughts that get me going. And then once you know that that's the series of thoughts that get you going, as soon as you notice yourself thinking these thoughts, you can remind yourself that there's an alternative. And the alternative has been called compersion. That is the opposite of jealousy. So you, if you've studied uh, behavioral psychology, you know it's much easier to substitute one behavior or one habit for another one rather than just trying to stop. And so one technique, or it's not really a technique, but strategy for dealing with jealousy is to be aware that actually you could get enjoyment from your beloveds connecting with someone else. 
And that might seem like a really bizarre idea, but if, if you think about it in terms of um, how happy that person, both of those people or all of those people are, and uh, enjoy that happiness rather than focusing on uh, what you're not getting or that you're not good enough or that uh, you're going to be left. I mean, these are all the kinds of thoughts that we, we, the stories we tell ourselves that create jealousy. So that's one way in which you can start managing your jealousy is by changing what you're thinking and really instead of trying to get your partner to stop doing whatever is making you jealous to start taking a look at what is it in me that's creating these feelings but if your partner is doing something that is not just um, a minor irritation or a minor uh, stab if you want to use that kind of metaphor but is you know the full-on knife in the heart then you're probably not going to get very far with changing your thinking and maybe not even with uh, the nonverbal things. And so it's reasonable to negotiate that, okay, I have this problem um, when you spend the night with someone, with your other lover, this is really difficult for me and, and I'm really having a lot of trouble with this. Um, would you be willing to uh, not spend the night, to, to come home at, you know, whatever curfew you agree on? So make it more manageable. Or maybe even coming home at midnight is too big a deal. Um, you know, maybe it's easier if you can negotiate uh, that, you know, date nights end early, it, not permanently, because this doesn't give you the opportunity to learn from your jealousy, but just to give you a chance to get a handle on uh, how you can desensitize yourself, how you can change your thinking, how you can get into therapy and work on some issues, how you can uh, develop a support system. For some people, you know, if they're having issues with being excluded, it works really well to try if... Uh, let's say you're in an open couple, both people have dates the same night. Um, these are strategies to reduce the amount of triggering that you're experiencing long enough to get a handle on it. And some people do this permanently. You know, they, they never have an overnight date and that's just how they do their relationship. For other people, um, you know, managing jealousy means being able to approve or not approve of outside partners or even choosing particular outside partners. For other people, uh, managing jealousy might mean uh, you don't ever have sex with somebody else in our bed. You know, these are the kinds of things that if they trigger you, you can work around them. You don't have to get, you know, uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, you don't have to let your jealousy get up to a 10. You can learn to manage it at a level of 1 or 2 or 3. So those are a few of the things I would suggest. And the, the good news is that for most people, it really does get better over time. But I have to tell you, there are some people I've known who have struggled with their jealousy and they've done everything right and they've never been able to overcome it. So it does seem that people are wired up differently. And so it's good to know yourself and not just assume right off the bat that jealousy is, is going to rule me, but not assume that it won't either.